or birds of prey. And God is saying, I'm answering, I'm hearing your prayers. Your prayers are coming now. They're manifesting in the name of Jesus. And as you pray, even as this bird of prey does, and he says, the enemy comes to prey on you, but when you pray to me, then the enemy is going to be destroyed. So in this attack on Jael's health, in the name of Jesus, we will pray. Hi, it's Matthew. How are you, Chester? Doing great, bless, brother. What about you, brother? Wonderful, wonderful. We know that it's good to see you, brother. Good to see you, brother. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You know that they're both on the spiritual And they're both on the spiritual But I don't want to be able to see the blessing that comes with believing. Thank you, brother. We have actually received the blessings that come to us. The Lord says, I want to give you the Holy Spirit. I want to give you power. I want to give you complete help. And you say, Lord, I receive all of those things, all of us, and I will use it for you, Heavenly Father. Could you hold this up for me? Father, Father just store me up. Give me all the power that I need to accomplish what you pointed out that I need to do. And God shows that there are acts of nature 
when the water, when the sun, when the bird, when the animals come around us, they can sense the power. And God, we receive it all, all your blessing, Jesus. And Father, give us unbelievable faith. And, and give us, God, let, let us actually cease what you're doing and what we should be doing. And everywhere we go from now on, Father, the Wednesday Warriors are representing you. Their life, their language, their attitude, and the power that it would be recognized with the world that we're in, <clears throat> that people will come to us and we'll be able to share <clears throat> the blessings that you blessed us with. Father, I pray for our families. I pray for our families like never before. So Satan comes to attack our family when we're doing the work of God. And I, I, I plead the blood over the families right now. I, I pray for the divine protection of yes. our families right now. In Jesus' name. And Father, you said when we pray and we believe, we will receive it. Yeah. And Father, yes. There's no doubt in my mind right now. Wow. That prayer went straight through. Amen. Thank you, God. Yes, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God orchestrates the, the scripture he gave me for the offering for today it says this the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word making it unfruitful yes the Lord told me a few months ago when I was going how, how, how am I gonna make it Lord and he says don't worry about money anymore you know when we worry about money it chokes us yeah. you know the word for worry is really the word choke that's what it does. It chokes out the God. We can't worry and have faith at the same time. So the degree do we worry, it destroys our faith. So God's speaking supernatural faith yeah. over our, our finances, yeah. over our health in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He said, don't worry, but come to me. He says, don't worry or be anxious for anything. Yeah. Who, who by worrying could add a single minute to your life? Yes. It can in the name of Jesus. So today, even as we give God, we say we don't worry about money. We thank you, God, that you have given us the power to make wealth, so we align with you. Even as Brant prays, God, give us wisdom. Give me wisdom. Yes. Help me, God. Give us wisdom, God, because you've given us the power to make wealth. So we say, give us wisdom on what to do and to see it come in for everything that you knew. No, Lord, we refuse to worry or be anxious and let it choke out the word of God and the faith of God and the provision of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll receive the offering. Uh, if you want to give, uh, you can give any of these means. You can do snail mail. You guys in the room can give here or go to Zell or give Go or Venmo or Cash App. Any of those things. So, uh, so give yeah, and watch what God does. God does amazing things. It's amazing. Brandy, speaking of God orchestrating today, the, the thing that you had, did you, can you read right there the scripture that Matthew and I was our theme today as we were setting up? Luke and Matthew and I are scripture. Can you see that in the chat? Yeah. Yes, sir. Read that first, because that's amazing what you had gotten after that. Okay, uh, again, uh, this is what I, I read in, in one of my verses I was reading this week. It's Philippians 1 6. He who has a good yes, work yes, yes. to you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And that's speaking directly to us. We continue to work each day for our Christ and uh, just spread the message to your friends and family. I, I do want to say this too. I, I want to say 
please encourage your friends, family to come to the warriors and zoom in at them for, you know, just because I'm looking out now, we've got 22 participants in Zoom and they look at the, the uh, room in here, it's full. So on that, but continue to invite your friends and family because where else, where else are they going to see, get or get Ken's knowledge of living? Where else are they going to get Joel's jokes and, and work? <laughs> Amen. Well, that's the only thing to do in our worship. In our worship, we say, Jesus, I love you. And it may be the only time for that is the day that we really tell him that we love him. It may be that we get so busy, which means burdened under Satan's yoke, we get so busy and we forget to tell him how much we love him that day. And where else are you going to get David Nutter or Ed Edwards? Our Carol Smith prayer, <laughs> or Brian Bolt's discernment, or even Matthew's dancing. Where else are you going to get that? <laughs> <laughs> you get that, you get that with the warrior. Come on. So please, please encourage your friends or family to zoom in or come, you know, come to the to the room there. So I just, just love it so much. Amen. Thank you, Randy. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, wow, God's orchestration is amazing as we sensed his presence and every everyone sensed his presence at the wall and then the word that the waters were stirred Amen. it's amazing because i got a, a text from isaac just a couple days ago you got to tell us what happened after we prayed last week talking about the prayer power of god uh, last week last wednesday I ask to pray for Joe Wilson. He has cancer on the liver on stage four. I ask to pray last week. And then Monday, I got this message. He said, good news. I hope you understand my reading. <laughs> Oncologist called this morning. Oncologist. Oncologist. Okay. Oncologist called this morning and said, "Just tumor. Mark was thirteen hundred, and is now two hundred." <laughs> Praise the Lord! Mm. I give him all the glory. All of your prayers have been a very large part of this great news. <laughs> and we do thank you. Love to all, Joe and Susan. Wow. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. So continue and pray for him that he will be here to go and meet him. Because he is our God. Yes, amen. They're right there with Aren't you going to the real? Yes. Next Tuesday? It's coming Tuesday, I'm going to Brazil and to see to the guy, my Timothy in Brazil, to review <coughs> after one year how he's doing in Brazil. And, and it, it says that uh, there are four stations that they want his program, four new stations in Brazil for his new program. So I'm going. And then we just coming back in September. And uh, this is the main point that I'm going to do, to visit the station, the churches, to meet with the listeners, and to sit with him, with the, the people, to see what we can do to enlarge his, his territory. <laughs> and also, my wife and I we sing in the, in the, in the, in the choir, in the choir of the First Baptist Church here, and the choir was invited to to go to Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro, to sing different places. <coughs> so as my wife we will be already in Brazil, and the choir is going going to Brazil end of August, so we have to wait for them. Until they come and then we join and we'll be 
Praise God. Amen. In Richard. And wow. the last one is that my wife will be 70 years old. Wow. So we will take some two weeks for celebrating. Yes. Amen. So just pray for us and then we are updating. Well, and Andrew and Bob. Andrew, Bob Elsesser, Andrew, why don't you come up? We'll pray for Isaac for this what? upcoming trip. But I, I just can't get this out of my mind. It's a picture of Isaac with this big plume on his head dancing Amen. the samba Amen. in Rio de Janeiro. Amen. <laughs> so thank you. He'll be dancing with God. Thank you, God. It, it won't be a carnival. It'll be a spirit feast. It'll be a feast and a festival in the spirit, God. So we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. 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 Yes, Prayers would come out in mighty power of the Spirit as He speaks over the airways, yes. and as these people that He's raising up speak over the airways, yes. they would reach thousands and thousands, and hundreds of thousands of people for the glory of the gospel. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for that reach in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, guys, quick, quickly, tell us, tell us what's going on with the Godmobile, and then Andrew, tell us what's, what, what happened. You just got back from, wow, just came back. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell us. Quick, guys, guys real, real quick. Uh, we, got, we got two weeks, and then it'll be the 4th of July. What's the 4th of July? It's Independence Day, isn't it, bro, my brothers? Let's talk to the young people there and old people, everybody, about the independence that we can have with the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Amen. Let us bring the word boldly, Father. Let us be bold for Jesus. That's right. There was just one thing that I was thinking about just for a second while we were all worshiping and all. You know, in the 15th, uh, the fifth chapter of, of Ephesians, the 15th verse, uh, the Apostle Paul talks about awakening the church. Mm -hmm. And this here church is called the Nova Church, which means in Portuguese, the new church. New church. Right? And so he talks about waking up the church and taking advantage of every opportunity because the days are evil. Mm -hmm. And to be not drunk with wine and the things of this world, but be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm asking that that blessing of the Apostle Paul would lay on the church that those days would be with us these two weeks coming Thursday. I just thank you so much. So it's July 4th. July 4th. Yes, it, it coming. It, we're going to be it coming, coming as we always are. Coming oh, fair. Yeah. Coming fair from 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Thank you. Come on. Uh, Give us that. And, and um, yeah, all I can tell you is that if you show up, and this is, I've always said this, the Holy Ghost is already there. He's already prepared all the hearts and all the souls for the things that we're going to present to them. And that the work is not ours. The work is the Holy Spirit's. Amen. And we're there just to speak That's right. joy, hope, and love, and the peace of Jesus Christ. And that's what there you go. God bless you. God bless you. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thursday, July 4th, coming fairgrounds in coming Georgia, 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock or 5 o'clock until they start the fireworks, which will be right around 10 o'clock or so. And we're going to lead dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of people to the Lord. And it's a, a phenomenal. If you've never done the Godmobile, if you've never done this, if, especially if you've never been on a mission trip or anything, this is like fit, shooting fish in a barrel. Because like, like Bob says, God is already there. God is already there. And speaking of God already being there, over in Belarus, Andrew, tell us what happened. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Joe has great videos, and he put on a website. You can watch those. We yeah. don't have time. We can show it there. Later, yeah. But it's what a great trip. I want to thank you, first of all, those who are prayer warriors. Uh, Brent and Gordy just called them. Uh, team Day. And many people just calling me and just supporting the Bibles. And great work. We just came back with printing the super book of Bruce Wilkinson. And uh, we started five courses and I brought 104 <laughs> leaders of churches. 
and we had a tremendous <laughs> outreach with the high. You know, Martin uh, Dicker had a big accident, and he supposed to be <laughs> with me, but he did not, and he sent me from South Africa, the Hein. And the story is a miracle. I said, Hein, last days, he did not have visa, and I said, Hein, I can help you in Washington, D.C., on your size, but I have nothing to do with South Africa. But I will help as much as I can. I fill all his paperwork, and he was denied the visa. You know, he came to the embassy and said, something not right there, whatever. I said, stay there. Don't move. Don't leave embassy at Johannesburg. I'm calling Washington to see my friends. And I did, that was early morning, just a few days before we depart. And guys, they called them from Washington DC, said this is our friend, a friend of Belarus, Andrew, we need to get him visa, please. The ambassador, brother Brenda, was running out of the embassy in South Africa. Hey, hide, hide, don't leave, oh, don't leave, come. He came and said, what is your passport? They just give us 20 minutes, you'll take the visa. Man, 20 minutes he got the visa, and we're going. Nothing can present. Praise God. But guess, I came from U.S. Praise the Lord. Praise we're the Lord. coming on June the, uh, June the 5th. I came and I see the message from Hyatt. Andrew, we have a problem in Yerevan, Yerevan, Armenia. He's flying through Armenia. And then Moscow, uh, my visa has a problem. I said, what is the problem? I said, the letters disappeared on the visa. <laughs> Every ink disappeared. <laughs> And what is in the world is going on in 20 years? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of visas were issued. We never happened that way. So he came to me to the passport and said, Hi, where are you going? He said, I'm going to Belarus. What is the dates? What is the name? What is the visa? What is that piece of paper? He said, I don't know. I never erased. It just disappeared. So they shuttled the whole airport in Erevan. Wow. Called nothing. But they let him last minute on a Moscow, uh, he applied to Moscow. Then in Moscow, the same thing happened. He said, you're not going to Belarus, Moscow says. It's not visa, it's not valid, uh, it's a piece of joke. <laughs> he said, he's praying, and we're praying, we know that it's a problem, we're praying, the whole country is praying. And then another officer, another officer, another officer came, then another general comes, well, go. They called to Belarus, checked the numbers of visas, and he came. So he came and gave testimony for the whole our conference. People have been shot. God is nothing can stop him. He came, and we did uh, three thousand books of super book were printed. Fifteen hundred for Armenia, fifteen hundred for uh, leaders of Belarus, and it's we'll start five courses. What God is doing with my life? Seven ten by seven. How to multiply a ministry and many other courses in Russian language. It's just exciting, so praise God, it's moving forward. Then we're printing good and evil Bibles for the 30 camps already. It will be over 16,000 children going through the summer. And then finally, it's a tremendous Bible for new believers. Man, it's undertaken. So those who knows what I'm talking about, you know what I'm doing for years and years. I don't need to repeat that. Yeah, I don't need to repeat. My God bless you because it's a revival comes now. Praise God, we'll put the foundation. Um, you will see some emails uh, with $20,000. Property was even given to me, praise God. And I'm building storage. We need a storage for the Bibles for the whole <laughs> Eastern Bloc, for Kazakhstan, Russia. Wow. It's going in, so we already put the foundation. Walls started raising another $40,000, put walls and the roof, and finish that building because I need a storage uh, for the literature. Wow. Uh, so. Miracles of God. Joe, thank you for praying. Thank you. And pray for Sunday night. I'm going back to Belarus for all this summer camp Sunday night. Wow. So keep us in prayer. Let me pray for Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Grant, can you uh, come up and pray for Andrew? Please. please. May the miracle of God. Lord, you say that we should go into all the nations and make disciples of all the nations. Yeah. Go into all the world, make disciples of all the nations. Andrew's doing that. Father, I pray that you allow him the favor. I pray you grant him the supernatural power and grace to see Belarus disciple for Jesus, Lord. I pray yes. that you'd save thousands of thousands. Of thousands. Right. thousands. I pray leaders there would be equipped with we courage, were. strengthened, and <laughs> would become mighty men of God, Lord. Mm. I pray for the greatest move of the Holy Spirit, the greatest move of Jesus in Belarus ever, Father. Andrew's ministry, and even in the country's history, Lord God. Yes. Father, thank you for, for opening hearts there, Lord. And I pray, Lord, even for the leaders of Belarus, Lord. I pray you would supernaturally uh, save them, Father. You yes. say that the, 
king's heart in yes. the hand of the Lord. Even our hearts are in your hand, Lord, for sure. Uh, the king's heart are in your hands, Lord. I pray you turn the leaders of the hearts of others towards your son, Jesus. Lord. Bless Andrew. Give him every provision that he needs. Put protection around him and his whole team, Lord, his precious wife and family. Body's gone, Lord. And I pray that you give him the greatest trip he's ever had in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. 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 Okay, 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 sure. Bibles. So pray for arrangement. I will be not loud. Say that will be quiet for Israel. But it's will be given a lot of Bibles in Israel in July. Wow. July, August. Amazing. 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 Yeah. yeah. Amazing. What Bibles? What Bibles? Oh, amen. What Bible? We didn't hear about any Bibles, did you? I didn't, I didn't hear about anything. No. Where did it go? Oh. <laughs> Praise God. Just think about this. The enemy, through his minions and the people that are cooperating, are destroying people in Ukraine, in Ukraine and Russia, sitting right next to, in between, there is Belarus, where we're bringing these, the enemy's destroying life, but we're bringing life through our partnership with Andrew and what he's doing. We're seeing life come. And then we're, we're in the other parts of the world that we see so much conflict in Israel, and he's getting Bibles into Israel. You know, I think God, I, pray, I started praying the other day. I want all of us to pray for this. I started praying that God would use this conflict in Israel to bring them to the Messiah. Yeah. To the Messiah. To Yeshua Hamashiach. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel, can you pray for that? Father God, we... we, we hey, George. George. Hold Father, on. We, 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 just pray. we, um... We can love you, aha, Bob, because you love us. <clears throat> you love us by, by bringing salvation to us through through your Hebrew nation. Lord, we, we pray for the conflict over there. We pray that you will um, just resolve it quick, Lord. We, we, we look for that, Lord. We ask that you strengthen the people over there as as they would would. Shuttered eyes and closed ears, Lord, will will just understand that you are you are for them and not against them, Lord. That you will give them the the time, the life that 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 they are yearning for, the everlasting life of your salvation. And we do this in your holy name, as, as Joel said, Yahshua, our salvation. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God is doing so much through so many people that are just available to him. Great testimonies. Bob, what's happening with the Godmobile and what's happening in Belarus and Israel. Just astounding things. And God uses those people who are available. Amen. I got a call Sunday morning from my best, one of my best friends for life, John Morgan, who's my co-author, lives in Orlando. And he called me and his wife said, John, don't call and bother Joel about something like this. It's not, nothing's going to happen. Don't bother him about something like this on Father's Day. And John says, no, I feel like I'm supposed to call Joel. So he calls me, and I answer. And most of the time, my phone would have been off that early in the morning on a Sunday morning. And so John calls, and he goes, hey, we need some help. And I said, John, what happened? And he told me this most amazing story. He said, you remember Thomas Nelson? I go, yeah, he makes the Bibles. No, no, Thomas Nelson. Oh, yeah, the homeless guy that lives outside of the store that you manage. He manages a store that he inherited from his father. It's an appliance store. And inner city... Orlando, Thomas Nelson lives outside of that store. And he said about a year, year and a half ago, he started talking to him, led him to the Lord, started ministering to him, helped him, ended up realizing that the guy was homeless, but he also had benefits, but he had a social security card. So he worked with him, got his social security card, and got him his benefits. So then the guy says, well, you take care of my money. I don't know what to do with it because I'm still homeless and I can't do anything with it. So John's been taking care of him, helping him. He said... Thomas Nelson, the guy I'm just talking about, is in the bus station in Atlanta. And I said, what is he doing in the bus station in Atlanta? He goes, you won't believe it. He said, my wife does investigative work for insurance companies, so she works with a private investigator, and she's done this kind of work, and she says, I think we can find Thomas's family. So she researched, found Thomas's family, this homeless guy in Orlando on the streets, found his family in um, Mississippi, no, where are we, Mobile. She ended up finding them. They said, we thought he was dead. And they said, no. And they said, well, we just sold our story as no place to go. And they said, we want him here. Would you send him here? So John put him on a bus 
from Orlando to Mobile. So he got on a bus. Yeah, he got on a bus. Yeah. So he got on a bus and he got to Louisiana, Lafayette, Louisiana, and somehow he wandered off the bus. And they got a call two days later, they hadn't heard from him, and the, the granddaughter and the daughter are saying, where's dad? And he goes, I don't know, he's not answering his phone. So she, on Father's Day, calls him. And he goes, I'm here in Orlando. And so John got on the phone with him and said, in Orlando, says, where are you in Orlando? And he named two streets, he goes, those streets aren't in Orlando. <laughs> he looked it up, and the only two streets that intersected there were in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. He had gotten on the bus, and gotten off, and wandered around, and gotten on the bus, and ended up in Chicago. <laughs> a police officer got a hold of him, and then some guy was, was on the phone with him, another guy before the police officer was with him, and said, hey, we found this guy because John called him and he said, is there anyone around you? And he goes, yeah, this guy. He handed the guy the phone and John talked to him. He said, hey, this guy has a little bit of dementia and he doesn't know where he is. Can you help him? The guy got him a bus ticket, got him food, got him all straightened around, took him to the bus station. The police officer said, okay, we'll help. The guy at the station said, we'll help and we'll get you back to Mobile. So they put him on a bus from Chicago to get him back to Mobile. So I got a call Sunday morning and I said, well, John, that's a great story. What's the deal? And he goes, he's in Atlanta. <laughs> and he said, how did he get to Atlanta? He said, I have no idea, but if he gets on another bus, he's never going to get to Mobile. And he said, Joel, is there any way possible that you could help us? And he said, we need someone to drive him from Atlanta to Mobile Holy to reunite with his family. And God just said, Luke Lewinsky. <laughs> this is who Luke is. This is Luke, Luke Luke's the man. I said, John, you won't believe this. But I said, there's no way we're going to get a hold of Luke possibly. Oh. I call. Luke sees his phone in the middle of work, getting ready for worship oh. down at Passion City Church. And he sees it. He goes, what's Joel calling for? And he picks it up. And, and I said, Luke, I need help. He goes, yes. Uh. I said, no, look, no, no, Luke, I need some help. I said, there's this homeless guy who's in Atlanta. He thinks he's in he, he was in Chicago. He thinks he's in Orlando. He needs to get to Mobile. Would you drive him? Luke said, yes. <laughs> Luke, Praise Luke. God, Luke. Come on. Oh. Way to go, Luke. <laughs> this is Luke with Thomas Nelson. Who you going to call? Call Luke. <laughs> Who you going to call? Call Luke. This is amazing. Luke Linsky. He got him. He got him some food. <laughs> drove him to Mobile. Reunited. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Come on. I mean, this guy was about to be homeless and thrown out of the only place he's ever stayed in the last couple few years. <laughs> and he's so relaxed with Luke. Right? And look at this. Come on. Oh, praise Come on. God. Luke, let's praise hear it for Luke. Woo praise the Lord. That's amazing. Right. There's your grandson, I think, right? Wow, amazing stuff. Way to go. Wait, it's amazing what God would do with people that are available. Amen. And it's amazing. Think of the orchestrations that had to happen to get that there. That he got on a bus to go to Mobile, he ended up in Lafayette, and ended up in Chicago. And a good Samaritan in Chicago says, I'll take care of him. He puts him down there. I mean, a nice police officer helped him in Atlanta and waited with him until Luke got there. Luke was available to God to do it and orchestrated that. And this homeless man reunited with his family that thought he was dead. Go, God. Way to go, Luke. Wow. Way to go. Way to what go. a good Samaritan. Amen. Isn't that amazing? And not only that, this goes further. Because the ladies, the, the ladies and some of the guys that hang around the dog park where I go, I've just been trying to talk to them about Jesus. And sometimes they're open, sometimes not so much. But they were just talking. One of them said, I saw this movie. It was nice about somebody helping somebody. I said, you want to hear about somebody helping someone? And I told them that story and their jaws dropped. Amen. They go, God, it's good. Praise God. And after I told him that story, I said, you won't even believe this. Listen to this story. And the guy I've been trying to reach at the dog park is a producer for ESPN. Oh, mm. And I said, you won't believe this story about one of my friends. Do you know Anthony Carter? He goes, yeah. And I said, well, he's the assistant coach of the Heat, right? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I put him on the screen all the time. And I said, well, listen to this story about my friend Larry Beal. Larry Beal, come on up here. you got to hear this. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going. You don't have your makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, tell, tell the AC. Wow. Come on. Quickly tell just the overview of the AC. Okay. And then 
then because you got to tell the swimming pool story. Oh no! You got no. You got to tell the swimming pool. And then in between those two, I'm going to show you a video. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll spend a few minutes. I was doing uh, in the '90s. I was volunteering, going to help kids. So I went to the Carver East Side Boys and Girls Club. Uh, just one of the many boys and girls clubs I would go to. And the, the director would stop all basketball, everything, to, so the kids could come and hear me. So obviously that wasn't happening. One, one kid who really wasn't happening, he would hit the door, I mean, he hit the desk, and every time I tried to talk, he'd like, you know, he just didn't want to hear anything. I said, man, what's up with you? I ain't coming here to, to hear no, no speak or no preaching. I came here to play basketball. And he was 14. I said, listen, man, if you be quiet, let me finish, I'll go out there and play you in basketball. Because back then, I was, you know, a lot slimmer or whatever. And I said, I play, I play you in basketball. And from Indiana, we think we can play anyway. Oh, yeah. So, so I, I said, I'll play you. <laughs> and so he was quiet, and he waited. And then I went out there. This kid is 14, 14, 15. I went out there to go play him. And before I could even take my shirt off, he slammed Duncan, like LeBron James or Michael. I'm talking about hard. He come out, he slammed, and then he's shooting jumpers way out of bounds. And I'm like, whoa. I said, man, who you play for? I don't play for nobody. I, 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 I used to go to Crim High School. I don't go to school no more. So he don't want to go to school. So I don't like the teachers. I'm like, he was just angry. Anyway, to make a long story short, we worked every year was trying to get him back in school. And he ended up getting a, uh, we ended up talking him into getting his GED, which he didn't believe in himself. He only took two parts. You needed three parts. He took two. I said, you going to take the last part? He said, no. I said, Mr. Bill, ain't nothing good going to happen for me. He said, my mama and my dad, he was, I mean, he was naming everything that was wrong. He said, mom on drugs. He said, mom was on drugs. And he, he said, his uncle was in prison. And nothing good was going to happen. So I said, okay. So long story short, we ended up finding a school in uh, Saddleback. One of the people at the Boys and Girls girl Club and, and, and a lot of us found we found Saddleback College in California. I have to look through a whole bunch of other schools. He went there, junior college. We said, if you don't like it, we'll come and get you. He went there, called me right when he got there about a week or so, he said, man, I love this school. So I'm killing everybody in basketball. Long story short, he became the, the Western Athletic Conference assist leader, and I think leader in scoring. And then two years later, he graduated from the junior college, so you can go anywhere you want to go, where you want to go. Want to come out to Georgia? Nope, I'm gonna go to University of Hawaii, far away. <laughs> and he did get drafted, but Pat uh, Riley saw him playing one time as he was up, uh, trying out and picked him up. He played with the Heat. I think he played in the NBA for about 13, 14 years. Wow. So today he is oh, uh, assistant coach, one of the assistant coaches for the Miami Heat. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Go, God. Great job. Praise Lord. Let me go ahead and play this short video of Larry's. Um, let me do this. Let's see. Advance. Happy Gallows. Let's see if there's a long video. I'm going to play this short video of Larry's to tell you a little bit about what he does. What Larry does is phenomenal. And so here's a guy that was really given up <clears throat> by the school, given up by the society. He had no chance because of his family background and had nothing going on. But Larry believed in it. And he gave his life to see this kid develop. And now this guy is mentoring men like. What is needed in the NBA? Some real men who understand manhood, right? Yeah, right? They don't need more talented people. They got plenty of talented people. They need people that will develop men. And Anthony Carter's doing that because of what Larry did in his life. So, uh, I got this right here. Um, this is just a, a little uh, promo for Be More Positive. Just imagine, a troubled teenager, lost in a forest, a huge forest, totally confused and perplexed. They want out, they yearn to get out, but they have no clue which direction to turn. Your team, however, knows where they are, and you have all the resources to help them navigate these misguided individuals safely. But there is one problem. You and your team cannot reach them. Not because you don't have the proper resources or tools, but because of all the interference and distractions. What are those interferences? They are pompous leadership, greed, apathy, jealousy, lack of compassion, and simply those in position who unfortunately don't care to give this matter their undivided attention. Each year, more kids, youth, are let off course due to the 
effects of drugs, poor education, crime, gangs, and all sorts of emotional challenges. Neglecting this issue puts our students, schools, and communities at a higher risk, and it adds to the already hectic workforce of our law enforcement agencies. Be More Positive USA was created years ago to serve as an emotional navigation system for times like this. We have two main missions. First, to assist in administering community summits, workshops, and focus groups that will serve as a rallying cry for support and attention for those in need and those willing to serve. Second, to offer our own social emotional learning tool, aka the I Have Willpower Behavior Modification Curriculum. It is proven and guaranteed to teach anyone new and creative ways to think through life challenges. We can prove that our teachings can be taught and comprehended by anyone. Listen to these written testimonies from some Metro Atlanta alternative high school students who participated in our 10-week group mentoring sessions in spring 2021. Your support and compassion for all of the students here amazes me. I thank all of you today. Thanks for coming. I love you, man. I like that you take time out of your day to come here. I get excited when I see you here because I know I'm going to learn something new. I respect everything you do, and as a whole, I feel like I can tell you anything. Something like this needs to be taught on a regular basis so that there won't be any more need for alternative schools. Being more positive is not meant to be a brand. It's meant to be a way of life. Please join us as we step up our search to find and create real hope for those in need. Be a part of the solution. Be more positive, USA.com.
And of course, the gate and stuff was locked, so I had to climb the gate. I took my jeans off. I climbed the gate. By the time I got there, one of the girls had gotten out. But two girls, as God is my witness, standing there today, were drowning. They were, they were like dying. They were like dying. I, I've never seen anybody die in before. And I'm standing like I'm standing here, and, I, and they're like this. <laughs> I jumped in. And when I jumped in, I got I pulled one girl up in the middle. She was like, and she came back down, and somehow I pulled her back up. And for somehow she stayed. But as she was trying to survive so at the top, the other girl was, was hitting my leg, you know, like that. And so I turned, I went down to get her, and I didn't do what lifeguards do, you know, turn them around and grab them from the back, because I'm not thinking. So I grabbed her from the front. And you know what she did, right? She grabbed me. And so now both of us, and she grabbed me in a way that I knew she wasn't going to let me go. She wasn't going to. So both of us, and I'm, I'm struggling, and she's struggling, and water going in my nose and everything. I'm like, I'm drinking and stuff. And so I, I somehow got a hold of a pole. And, and I pulled the, the pole, I pulled her up, and I, I got out. And when I got out and laid down, I was like, I could just see the beauty of the sky, the sun, I mean, the, the uh, moon, the brightness. And I said to myself, wow, I am right here where God wanted me to be. Amen. You know what I mean? Out of this big old world, this thing is I talk out of this big old world, you could be anywhere, but I was right here where God wanted me to be, where I can save lives. Hallelujah. And wow. And wow Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I still feel like with, with what I'm doing in the schools, be more positive and everything, I still feel like I'm right where God wants me to be. That's right. I feel like we're doing that every day. And Joel and I, we was talking about different things. And I know you shared it at the park. And somebody said, wow, isn't it amazing how they felt that God used those prostitutes? Because had I not been disturbed, look what would have happened on the back end. Amen. Amen. And so there's scriptures that talk about how God <clears throat> uses bad things to make some good happen. Yes, yes, so yes. it's just amazing. That's a true story. Wasn't meant to happen. <laughs> so thank you, Joel, for giving me the opportunity. Hallelujah. Let go, God. Be more positive. We thank you, God, that you're a you've anointed him. God, we thank you that these are the kind of men that you use. Yes, Lord. Just think about this, all the what ifs and all the orchestration that happened to save these two girls this day. And then he saved so many other that there, there's kids out there drowning today that he is saving. And it's because you use men like this who are men after your own heart. God, just think of the what if. What if he would have said yes to the prostitute? We know that the enemy would have gained a hold. What if he would have just ignored the cries of those that are desperate? But he doesn't do that now. He doesn't yield now to the enemy. And he doesn't ignore the cries of those that are in need. So we bless him for that in the name of Jesus. You said to look out for those that are hurting, rescue those that are going down, the enemy is pulling up. And so we thank you that he's doing that. We can partner with him to see that glory of your kingdom come through Larry. We bless him now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You got Amen. We can't uh, imagine, but, but we want to imagine just the stories of those girls that said, wow, I was saved. Some young man saved me at one time. Um, and, and see what their lives have influenced and the stories they've told about that. So we thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're thankful. Let me say this. As I climbed back up, because I didn't go in with, as I climbed back up and got to the top of the thing, I turned around. The girls had waited for me to climb to the top just so they could wave. Like I say, thank you. Amen. Isn't that something? We should Amen. thank Jesus for him saving us every day. We should just stop what we're doing and just look up and just say, every day. Thank you. Amen. 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 Imagine where we get to heaven, the people that we didn't stop and wave, but the people that we've influenced by what we've done, how we've partnered with each other, how we've given, how we've ministered to people, how we've loved people. Just imagine, God, you thank you, God. Give us a picture of that now, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for my brothers here. I thank you, and I say with your voice, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Thank you for these testimonies. We know that each and every person, each and every man that is part of Wednesday Warriors has testimonies on that. But things that they've written, things they've said, people they've prayed over, things they've given, ministries they've partnered with, 
people that they've blessed in their business, people they've helped in business, are those incredible line of saints that will that will gather in heaven around us someday. But right now, God, we know that our reward is from you. And we thank you, God. So help us to keep giving, to keep being in the right place at the right time and recognizing what you're doing at every point in our life. And Lord, I thank you for the example of Larry, that he would be a man that says, you know, I had an opportunity. This prostitute came in my room. There was nobody around. That could have been something that I could have done for myself, but I didn't. I made the choice to follow you, God. So thank you for those choices in the name of Jesus. Would we all make those choices in Jesus' name? Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Let's let's gather around, God. There's such strong so anointing here this? for healing stop the, stop the and video? for restoration in our families. Okay. Yeah. And for us to pray over each other, to become the men that God's called us to So let's get together in the room, three, four, or five guys each, and then I'll uh, I'll open up a couple break rooms online. Bless you guys. Amen. So those people drowning were the same prostitutes? Those, no, no. Was, they were different girls. Those were little girls. Oh, little like girls? 13. Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't mention it was little girls. Over oh. Yeah. They were like 13, 14. Wow, that's a big deal. Two girls could save us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because one of them had gotten out. Let me sit back here. I guess I. Back here today. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Brad, how you doing, man? I'm blessed, bro. 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 i What's it? No, I don't know. Yes, yes. Okay. You can only see him without your, without, you can see him in your heart. Yes, but yes, but Jesus will be the first person to see him. Yes, amen. 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 Oh, I'm about to say, that'll get you a hug. It's a good, it's a good shirt. It'll get you a hug and a kiss. It does teach me stuff. Yeah. I think you can put it off because it's, all, it's over there. Now we are praying. Should I stop it? Yeah. Well, how are you doing? Um, feeling the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just, uh, the Lord is here with us.